Hi everyone, it's Jean Hansen, co-founder of the Janitorial Store and MyHouseCleaningBiz.com. Today I want to talk about managing negativity in your business. If you haven't experienced it yet, it's just a matter of time. And this is an important topic that you should be considering yourself on how to manage negativity in, in your business. And if you have a management team or supervisors, you need to be talking about it with them because they need to help you manage this and they need to manage their own negativity. So I've got a great video at Clean Smart University that's got loads of tips on how to do this. It's a short video. It's only 11 minutes long, but it's really packed with great information. It has a handout that goes with it. So you can facilitate a discussion and watch the video with your team. So I'm going to show you a few of the really great clips in this video. So stay tuned and watch. The truth of the matter is misery loves company. If someone is mad or upset about something, they want other people to validate their feelings. They feel better about their negative feelings if someone else agrees with their opinion. They persuade others to view the workplace or a particular situation or person in the same way they do. Whining, arguing, gossip, protesting, making allies, and so on. Once they have validation from one or two other individuals, then they begin to believe they're correct and that gossip or opinion gains strength. The point is not whether their opinion is accurate or not. The point is that acting in a way that spreads negativity is not the way issues or disagreements should be handled. So you can see how negativity gets spread throughout your organization. Then she goes through a whole example of how it gets spread through to different people in your organization. She also talks about the signs of negativity and, and how you can tell that it's spreading throughout your organization. So let's watch the next part. So now what? Well, you've got to step in. You've identified negative behaviors. Now you have to manage those behaviors. The best way to do that is to catch it early and resolve the issue at the root cause. It's likely that the root cause involves one or maybe two individuals who are frustrated about something or are frustrated with one another. Once you've determined who those individuals are, it's time for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. When you sit down with these individuals, the goal is to understand their concerns, work with them to see the reality of the situation, and, if necessary, make it clear that you have no tolerance for negativity in the workplace. Okay, I'm going to pause it here, and she does go through several suggestions for resolving the issue. So this next section I really like because it addresses our own negativity, because if you're dealing with this on a daily basis, it really can affect yourself. You will have to battle your own negativity from time to time. Maybe your own boss is putting a lot of pressure on you or setting goals that you feel are unrealistic. Maybe you're just in a funk with your job or issues outside of work have you worn down. Your attitude, whether positive or negative, affects the morale of your team. Here are some questions to ask to see how your actions might impact those around you. Do I offer praise or do I always criticize? Do I create harmony or division with my words, actions, and with the way I do my job? Do I listen or interrupt? Do I reserve judgment or pass judgment? Do I treat everyone fairly? Those are some great questions to ask yourself and to have your team ask themselves. This can lead to a really great discussion on this topic. The last section I want to show you deals with the language you use when talking with your employees. So this is another That's really not great investing section. to make the meeting positive. An article called Overcoming Negativity in the Workplace printed in Executive Leadership lists some common negative words or phrases and provides the alternative positive words or phrase. Here are some that really stood out to me and I find them useful when speaking to my team to harness potential negativity. Rather than saying always or never, which are definitive terms, use the word sometimes. An example is, things never go how I want them to. I'm guilty of saying that, but I know it's not true. I'm dramatizing a situation that I'm upset about to make reality seem worse than it is. How about saying, things sometimes don't work out as I planned? That's more of a coping phrase rather than a defeatist phrase. Rather than saying, this is a problem, try viewing it as an opportunity. This is an opportunity. It might be a really frustrating opportunity that forces your team to regroup, but an opportunity nonetheless. Stop saying, this won't work, and try saying, did you consider this potential flaw? Rather than saying something can't be done, say, this will require hard work. 
When you disagree with someone's opinion, instead of saying, you're wrong, try saying, here are my thoughts. And when one of your employees is struggling, rather than just giving up on them and saying, he's not able to, try saying, maybe he's better suited for. These are just a few examples to get you thinking about. All right, so those are some of the tips that you get out of this video. And at Clean Smart University, we have over 8,000 professional training videos. And so this is going to give you a wealth of training topics to talk with your employees and your managers and supervisors with and for your own personal learning as well. So if you want to learn more, check out the janitorialstore.com's premium membership and I'll have a link for you at the bottom of this video. Thanks and have a great day.